Hello and welcome to this third video in my Solidity series. And first of all, I want to thank every one of you who watched the previous videos and left comments. I appreciate it very much. Today we're going to continue and build upon the bank contract that we built in the previous video. The code is available in my GitHub, which will be linked in the description below. What we're going to do today is change one of the data structures here so we can have multiple users in this smart contract and not just one. And we're also going to go through some error handling and some events. Because one issue with the previous contract was that only the owner could actually interact with the contract, right? We needed to check so that the owner was the one that was trying to withdraw money. So we're going to change so that we can have multiple users. And in order to do that, we need to be able to store multiple balances. And that's where we're going to need another data structure. And if you're familiar with dictionaries from other programming languages, uh, this works just the same way. And how we write this dictionary in Solidity is with the mapping keyword. And that's basically what a dictionary does. It maps from one unit to another. So here it's going to map from an address to an integer, right? Because it's going to be a balance. So it's going to map from an address, which is basically a user of this contract, and an integer, which is the balance. And this is going to be private. And we're going to call it balances. And that replaces this one, obviously. We don't need this one anymore because we're going to keep all of the balances in this. And now we've got a bunch of errors here, of course, uh, because we removed the balance variable. So instead of depositing just to the balance, we want to deposit to the actual sender of the deposit. And you know by now that we can get the sender by typing message.sender. And this is really it for the deposit function. Now, instead of just adding to the balance variable, we add it to this balance dictionary where the value will be updated to the sender's account. We also need to do the same in the withdraw function. And we no longer need to check so that the sender is the owner because now anyone can use this and send money to it. So instead, we're going to put balances here just like we did before, put message.sender. So now we just want to make sure that the sender that's trying to withdraw something actually has enough ether in his or her account to withdraw. If they do, we're going to decrease that account by amount. And of course, this is still the same we need to change here as well to message.sender. And this was, of course, if there was something wrong with the actual send function. Then we need to reverse the change we did in the balance. And in get balance as well, we need to adapt the new notion here of having balances and message.sender. And I see that we have one error here. Oh yeah, we forgot an S like that. Now this should all work like before. And we can, of course, try it out by running this in the JavaScript virtual machine. We can delete this old contract that we had and create this. And just like before, we can get the balance, but now we'll get the balance of my account, which will, of course, be zero because we haven't deposited any. So let's go ahead and deposit a thousand ways. We'll check the balance and it's a thousand. If I now change the account used here to another address and try to get balance, it's going to be zero. Uh, and not because I don't have permission to execute the function, but it's because the balance is actually zero. And now if I switch back, the balance is a thousand. And the same is then true for, for the withdraw function. I can withdraw with this account, but I wouldn't be able to do that with any of the other accounts. So now this has, of course, made huge improvements to our contract because, because now it's more usable for, for many users. And I also wanted to show, show you a better way of handling errors because this is, of course, if this were to be untrue, 
that the person requesting the withdrawal doesn't have enough money in their account, then nothing would, would happen in here, right? We just get a transaction without any real result. And this is not a very effective way of, of doing this. We wanna, there is better ways to handle this type of input errors. And the best way right now is to use the require function, which is a function that uh, will check a condition. And if the condition is met, then it will just proceed. If the condition is not met, then it will throw an error and it will revert the uh, transaction. So this is where we put our condition. And we want to, of course, use the exact same condition as we had in this if statement. We want to do balances message dot sender should be greater or equal to amount. And then we don't need this anymore. We can delete this. So what would happen here if we go through it step by step is that we would come to this line here and the require function would check this statement and if it, it's true that we have enough balance, the function would just continue to execute. If for some reason this were not to be correct, someone tried to withdraw money, doesn't have money, this would throw an error and revert itself. You could also do it with an if statement like we had before and use throw. Oh, sorry, throw, but that's not as effective. This is a better way to do it. Um, so that's what we're going to use. And we can try this out by trying to withdraw money that we don't have. So let's just check how much balance do we have in this account. Oh, yeah, we need to create another contract. Sorry. Create a new one with the updated code and get balance. We have zero balance and we try to withdraw 100 ways. Now we can see here in the console, virtual machine error revert, the transaction has been reverted to the initial state, which is great, then we don't have to pay any gas, that means uh, we don't have to pay anything to execute this function. Another important thing is events. Events is pretty much additional data that gets included in the transactions on the blockchain, so that we have a better way of actually, well, both looking at the history and see what has happened, but also for other contracts to be able to listen to certain events and act on certain events happening in our contract. And it's very simple to create events. All we do is we type event, and for example, we can have an event that is deposit done. And then we just specify what we want to uh, have to be included in this event, which would maybe be a string message if we want to you know just have a text message and also an address maybe that the uh, money was deposited from and the amount is probably also good to have and then we'll also do another event that is withdrawal done and we will just use the same contents of this message. And this is one way to do it. There are obviously you could structure this in other ways, but this is these are two simple events. And how you then use these is that you go into the function. So here we had the deposit function. And we uh, just call it like this, deposit done. And we construct a message here. So uh, a deposit was done, specify the address by message, sorry, message dot sender, and then the value, the amount is of course message dot value. And the same is done in the withdrawal. And then we would need to have, we'll need to have an else statement here in order to use this event. So this is of course, if the send function is properly executed, we'll have withdrawal done. 
a withdrawal was done we will have the same message dot sender and here we have amount right so this will then well, let's see what's this um, oh typo message dot sender there we go uh, and so this will then fire these events when money has been successfully withdrawn or successfully deposited other contracts can then use this information in order to act upon a deposit or a withdrawal so they could listen for these events and act on them and this is of course also good for some sort of logging where we log what happens in the contract because this will get rep recorded on the blockchain so we can try this out by depositing some money we'll delete the old contract create a new one and deposit 500 ways and we can now look at the, in the details of this transaction and we'll see here logs so this is where oops sorry this is where all the events will uh, show up and this is of course you're able to trace this back in all of the transactions we can see the, uh, the it was deposit done and from which address and how much and the same is then of course done when, if we withdraw money withdraw 100 ways we can see the same thing here where we have the withdrawal done event so this is great for uh, improving uh, logging and also enabling other contracts to interact better with your contract and that's basically it now you know how to create the dictionaries in solidity and you know how to handle errors and create events in the next video we'll look at contract to contract interaction how smart contracts can interact with each other and how they can listen for these events thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and please leave a like if you like the video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more